Welcome, everyone. Great to be here with you today on our Thursday shows on the Cabral Concept. You know, sometimes it's toxicity-based, sometimes it's longevity-based, sometimes it's exercise-based, sometimes we do case studies. Today is an actual case study. Always keep in mind that we are a true clinical-based practice. Uh, we had offline locations for, what, about 17 years or so uh, before we went all virtual in 2018, 19, somewhere right around there. And the thing is, it, it enabled us by going virtual, though, to work with people uh, all over the world and actually be able to ship labs like this to 27 different countries. So I'm excited, uh, of course, to always be able to share functional medicine lab testing with you because it is the way that I got well. There would have been a, no way to figure out what was wrong with me through blood work alone. Over two dozen different medical doctors tried and they couldn't figure it out. So lo and behold, uh, this minerals and metals test that I'm going to review with you today was the very first lab I ran. And of course, it changed the trajectory of my life from being a sick uh, child and individual to having obviously all the different diseases that I had to then being able to figure out how to overcome them. And of course, now completely disease free. And my mission is simply to share this information with you to let you know that you do have this option. The other nice thing about this minerals and metals test that I'm going to review today is it can be used with both children and adults. And we're going to go through a child's minerals and metals test, also called an HTMA. So if I refer to it as an HTMA, uh, that is another reason. And that is because it's simply a hair sample, which is why it's so easy for a child or an adult to complete it. It's just a couple of snips of hair from the back of the head that you will never see missing. It should be done uh, as close to the root as possible, not to the scalp, but the root. And uh, it's about an inch and a half long. If you have shorter hair like I do, well, you just need to take a couple more snips of hair. That's it. And then you throw away the rest of the hair. You don't use it. You just use the first inch and a half closest to the head. So again, very simple for children and adults to complete. And what it goes over and what it shares with you and shows you is actually your electrolyte levels in terms of energy and stress in the body. We'll review that. It goes over other uh, minerals in the body. One that we just, we simply don't look at. We, we discard it unless it's too high. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But then the nice thing is it also shares with you your toxic heavy metals. The last part I'm going to go over today is mixed oxidizer, fast oxidizer, and slow oxidizer, and what exactly this means. So hopefully this video will be helpful uh, for you if you run your minerals and metals test. And again, like I said, if I haven't already mentioned it, we have thousands and thousands of people now running this lab. And the reason is that we are giving this lab away complimentary. It is a $299 value. It's always been my goal, well, five years after setting that goal to be able to get a lab to people that would give them so much information, we're able to do that. And you can find that over at equa.life forward slash membership or just stephencabral.com forward slash Bowen, which is A-Y-U-B-O-W-A-N. I can link that up today. It'd probably be easier for you anyways to be able to get that lab free. So let's see if I can find that uh, show notes for today so you can follow along with the video as well. Today's as at stephencabral.com forward slash 2190. Of course, you can listen to this on audio, but on YouTube, it's just my name, Stephen Cabral. And you can always watch the video on the podcast page as well. And today is 2190. I'll give you the PDF to download for yourself uh, as we go through the lab. The lab will be fairly straightforward to go through. Uh, but again, I hope that this is a pretty good guide. And it shows you how a children's uh, minerals and metals test is going to be slightly different than an adult's. All right, let's dive in. Let's get started. Why did this child run this lab? Well, their parents saw that there was some lower mood or moodiness with the child, some learning-based issues, some skin-based issues that they were on um, steroids for for a period of time. Uh, there was potentially some digestive issues that they mentioned, and uh, we already know about the skin-based issues. So, this is a great lab to run, again, because it's so simple for children. Now, children can run the omega-3 test for omega-6s to omega-3s. They can run the food sensitivity test, but those are a couple drops of blood from the finger. Not every parent wants to take a couple drops of blood from the finger. This won't tell your food sensitivities, of course, or your omega-3s, but it gives you so much information. So when we look at this lab, and of course, this lab has been redacted. So I pulled out, of course, the child's name and the lab uh, number and all that. But you can see that it's a four-year-old child. Okay. So the first things first, real uh, big overview of a minerals and metals test is that there's a blue wave across the middle. 
and it kind of goes ups and downs and ups and downs. Well, that is the uh, reference range for a healthy individual. You want to be within the blue. Okay, that's very straightforward. There's obviously parameters on blood work. You don't need to just be like a 40 like it is for the calcium. Okay, that's the ideal. That's the dotted line. But you don't need to be right at that dotted line across. Across. You just want to be within the blue zone. Okay, so the first thing you do when you look at a here, uh, tissue mineral analysis, HTMA or minerals and metals test, you just want to say, okay, how many do we have inside of the ideal reference range? Kind of a macro overview. And for a child, we're like, well, this child doesn't have any really except for what? Manganese and selenium. That means that they're mineral deficient. Well, not so fast. For a child that's really below 80 to 100 pounds, it just means that, again, their body is much smaller than an adult. They don't have the same level of tissue stores. Their body's just still growing. They're not going to have all of their mineral levels into the blue zone, okay? So if you're a naturopathic doctor, uh, functional medicine doctor, integrative, level, uh, integrative health practitioner level two, um, I just want you to know that, again, we've run, I, I've I probably run 10,000 of these in my career. Um, with a child, you're most likely not going to see them in the ideal range. That doesn't mean that they're not healthy, and it doesn't mean that they're not getting enough nutrition. It means that they have maybe one-fifth the body mass or one-fourth the body mass of an adult, and they simply don't have those tissue stores or ability to even use all those nutrients for the body, okay? So just keeping that in mind. Now, so does this mean that it's invalid for a child? Well, the answer is, of course, no. And the reason is, is that uh, what we do is we look at the ratios and total levels. So let's go through it right now. So these first four are the electrolytes, calcium and magnesium and sodium and potassium. And what you want to make sure is that we say like, oh, well, this person's getting too little magnesium, too little sodium. No, it's not that. The first four are the electrolytes, which means energy and stress in the body. And if you look at the ideal calcium, it's a 40. And if you look at the ideal magnesium, it's a six. Okay, well, that's about a seven to one ratio. It's a 6.67, but who's counting, right? So 40 to six, okay. That means it's a seven to one ratio, approximately. So if this person came out with a 30 for their calcium, right, this child, and a three for their magnesium, and I multiply seven times three, right, what do I get? 21, okay. That does not equal 30, right? 30 divided by seven does not equal three. Okay, it equals 10, right? So that's where they should be. So what does this mean? Well, it means, sorry, sorry, 30 divided by seven does not, <laughs> does, not equal, uh, does not equal 10. All right, so when we look at this, we're saying this child is deficient in magnesium, right? Their levels aren't in the blue, that's okay. They're a four-year-old, but they are definitely low in magnesium. So this child, could use a little bit more magnesium. And that kind of goes along with, well, they have lower mood. They've got some skin issues. Well, magnesium is needed for both of those. Interesting. Okay. And, and learning-based uh, issues as well. Okay. Now let's move on to the other two electrolytes. Very, very important here. Sodium should be ideally at 25 and potassium ideally at 10. Well, what is that? Well, that's a 2.5 to 1 ratio. Great. Now let's take a look. Sodium's a 6 and potassium's a 4. This is a problem because the ratio is upside down. Sodium should always be more than potassium, right? And again, I'm not talking about nutrient intake, I'm talking about cellular tissue utilization. So what does this mean? Well, if I divide four by six, right, what am I gonna get? That's uh, not even 1.5, right? So that's not going to work. So when I look at this, I say, okay, uh, there is not a 2.5 to one ratio here. We're actually an upside down ratio. Does this mean the child needs more sodium? No, again, when I go back to adding magnesium, what I'm doing is I'm adding magnesium to calm stress response, right? Magnesium turns off or it actually starts to block the sympathetic nervous system. So it blocks and helps calm fight or flight, right? So then calcium doesn't go as high. That's how it works. With sodium, sure, this child could use a little bit more sea salt at their meals. However, that's not what we're doing really to raise sodium, okay? So sodium is maintained in the body through the kidneys and a lot of it through the HPA axis with the adrenals. I don't want to get too deep here, but what that means is that when the body is stressed, it's supposed to produce a hormone called aldosterone. Aldosterone tell the, tells the kidneys to remove some potassium or increase sodium or both. And I don't want to get I don't want to get too technical here, but when it's not working properly, 
uh, you end up having less sodium-based retention and utilization of the body. Now, when we worked with this client, because again, I help oversee the team over at Equalife, it was found that this child used corticosteroids uh, in the past for skin issues. The problem is now the adrenals, the HPA axis is not working how it should. The good news is all of this is fixable, right? So we're going to work with this uh, family to be able to improve the overall adrenal response. uh, And so there you have it. Okay, when we move on to the rest of the nutrients, the next one comes iron. Iron, again, I'm always honest, and I'm unbiased with you, you don't use a minerals and metals test to look at iron, okay? It is not the primary storage container here for iron. You look at iron in the blood. You run your total iron iron binding capacity, TIBC, and you run at least your ferritin besides that. There's other numbers to run, but you want to run those. Okay. So the only time iron is important is if we see high iron, which we see in sometimes men, very rarely in women, but sometimes. So we could see it high in in postmenopausal women. That's a problem. Because then we ask them to go to their PCP, their medical doctor, because we are not diagnosing disease or providing medical treatments, because they may have something called hemochromatosis. Again, we're not diagnosing that, but when you run your TIBC and your ferritin, you're like, whoa, I have high iron. That's a problem. Okay, you don't want higher iron. You want normal iron. All right. So that's why it matters on this. Then when we look at copper, we want to look at that in conjunction with zinc. And that should be about a 1 to 12 or a 1 to 15 ratio at the highest. This person's a 1, this child's a 1 to 11. So not bad, right? Not bad, pretty close. That's that's nothing for alarm. So what do we want to do? Well, just support them with that. Just maybe a little bit extra zinc, maybe a little bit extra copper. That's going to be in a half a scoop of the daily nutritional support anyways. So they're going to be fine. They're going to be good to go. Now, the manganese is interesting because that one is almost at the ideal. You might say, well, this child's getting enough manganese. That's great. Well, let's step back a little bit because with low sodium, right, a poor stress, Stress response, their body's their body can be trying to compensate, and manganese is a good indicator of compensating for natural energy, natural adrenal output. And the reason why I can tell you this pretty much definitively, this this child also ran the candida metabolic and vitamins test, which looks at norepinephrine metabolites, and they were actually low on that, which means they were low on energy production. That's why, although the uh, minerals and metals test is amazing, running the whole starter kit is even better. Because then you look at all your vitamin levels, not just your mineral levels, and you look at gut function, you look at neuros, and so, yeah, it's amazing. So, okay, we know that, yeah, there's an energy issue going on here. Makes sense. Low mood, low energy, right? Low learning-based issues. This, this all makes sense, okay? So now when we look at chromium, that's great for a child. Nothing wrong with that. Good blood sugar uh, nutrient right there, mineral there, as well as selenium. Great for the thyroid, great as an antioxidant. I'm happy with that. They could be, they might even be getting that in their diet right now, extra, extra, which is great. And their phosphorus is right at the bottom of the blue. That's good for muscle and bone. So I'm happy. I'm happy overall with this. Um, overall for the child, for the nutrients, I said, okay, we need a little bit more of that calming mineral magnesium. We need to work on the overall stress adrenals of the body from the previous corticosteroid use. And uh, we just keep wanting to support the zinc and the copper. Just again, nothing extra, just probably half a scoop of that daily nutritional support a day in a uh, nutritional supplement. And then the last thing we really want to work on is this heavy metals. They've got just a touch of mercury, just a little bit of mercury, but they've got a good amount of aluminum in their body. Now, good news is the body is excreting it, but there's certainly an aluminum Aluminum toxicity. So we work with the parents and we say, are you, are you cooking with aluminum foil? Are you using aluminum pans and spatulas? A four-year-old is probably not using an antiperspirant, so it's not coming from there. Uh, is there aluminum in the tap water? Probably answer is yes. So let's get a water filter, right, for the family to drink water from. It's good for the whole family because if the whole family tested, they'd probably all have high aluminum, which is not good for the brain, not good for the nervous system, and certainly leads to faster aging because of all the inflammation. Now, nickel can also be a component of um, a lot of... Uh, aluminum and metal-based products. So there is possible that it's from their cooking-based utensils. And so we'd, we'd want to look at that. Even though the nickel is normal here, it's within ideal range. By the way, these additional minerals, you almost never see them in the ideal range. They're just not present in the soil uh, as much anymore. So how can they be in the body? They're not as much to be worried about because these are these aren't just trace minerals. These are ultra trace minerals. The, look how small these are, 0.02. I mean, we're talking about small, small numbers. So not as much worry about this. Okay, we don't have to get worried about everything. 
So we'll be doing a little bit of a, a gentle heavy metal detox for this child because they're only four years old. So we have to do a very limited protocol for them. Uh, but again, getting good nutrients in will help with this. All right. The last part is the mixed oxidizer, which is ideal. The fast oxidizer, which most children are, and the reason is that they're more in what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. So they're typically not in the fight or flight, right? So if they're not in the fight or flight, it allows them to burn through their food quickly which is also why most children, they need three meals, like say like uh, eight in the morning, and then let's say 12.30, and then let's say like 5.30 at night. But they also do really well with in-between meal snacks at let's say like 10.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. or something like that. And those are more easily digestible. And the reason is they're burning through their food faster. They're a fast oxidizer. Now this child is more like the one out of 10, all right? It's much more rare to see a child as a, as a slow oxidizer, and especially this three stars down here. And the reason is they have an upside down sodium to potassium ratio because for whatever reason, their body is not as balanced in the fight or flight versus rest and relax. Now, we see this from most adults. Nine out of 10 adults are slow oxidizers. And the reason is more stress, body gets worn down over time, more toxicity, their digestion isn't as fast or great. And so they burn through their food slower, which leads to weight gain, less energy, et cetera. Okay. So but all of this can be fixed. Again, that's the nice thing is that when you look at this, you hear me talk about you know all the things that may be imbalanced, but that's my job. That's the job of an integrative health practitioner or a naturopathic doctor. We're not here to provide you with medical advice. We're here to provide you with underlying root cause issues that lead to the skin rashes, the low mood, the disrupted sleep, the learning disability. So again, just keep in mind, not medical advice, but you don't really, you, it's fine to get medical advice, but do we really need a four-year, four-year-olds on pharmaceuticals? No, not unless it's life-saving uh, conditions or congenital based issues that they need to be. We really want to figure out the root cause, especially at a young age. These parents are doing a great thing for their child because if you figure it out now, then you learn healthy eating from a very young age. And I'm not saying they're not doing that now, but you, you then you look at, okay, well, this is what we do in order to rebalance the body. And so, yeah, I mean, they paired this with the candida metabolic and vitamins test, which is a great thing to do. Um, I'll link that up today. I believe this is, uh, I actually don't know the <laughs> number to this episode. I think it was 2192, uh, but we'll, we'll link that up. You'll find it at stephencabral.com uh, forward slash podcast. I'll have that link for you today. And, and hopefully I've already mentioned it in the show. So that is that. I, I wanted to provide this for you. Remember with a child, you're not looking for them to be in the ideal ratio because they're not an adult. Once they get to like that 90, 80, 90 pounds. Okay. Then we're, that's a different story. Um, what we're really looking for is ratios. There's still supposed to be at proper ratios, no matter what the age. We're looking for heavy metals, and we're looking to make sure as a child that they're a fast oxidizer because that is the growth anabolic-based stage. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Always feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could help. And on today's uh, show, I will also link up where you can get your minerals and metals test for yourself or a family member. And, uh, and again, I'm, I'm here to help. So just let me know if there's any questions. Take care, everyone. If you want to see additional case studies, uh, we'll put a link to those as well. All different lab tests, whether it be the candida test or the mold test or uh, any of the other tests I've gone through before. All right, take care. Have an amazing day.